Well, hello there everyone. Um, this is the third unboxing video um, in the little series of my most recent purchases. And this one here is for the elite companies of the French infantry between 1807 and 1814. Uh, these were done by Perry Miniatures, and as you can see, you get 40 in the pack, uh, same number as you get in the Pike and Shot Infantry Regiment, although that's for a couple of hundred years earlier. Um, so let's have a quick look at the back. We'll see here. So yeah, so the interesting thing about this one is that um, Perry Miniatures actually created two almost identical boxes um, for this. Um, uh, the, for the French elite companies and the first one was made with a certain number of sprues and it was essentially made for your conventional rank and flank Napoleonic battles sort of like black powder or uh, is it clash of eagles I think is another one um, but this one here is actually made with a different selection of elite sprues and the whole idea being is that it makes it easier for um, skirmish games, games like Sharp Practice, or I suppose in a pinch you could use something like Donnybrook um, by the League of Augsburg. Um, but yeah, so anyway, let's quickly go through these sprues and we'll see what we've got. We've got, let me see which parts we have. Just quickly matching up the different sprues to see if we have a great deal of variety because the whole idea is that these are the exact same uh, sprues as the uh, other box of the elite companies done by Perry Miniatures um, but they're just a different selection of them so these are far more suited to uh, skirmish games they are more dynamic in their poses um, so we have a command sprue here Let's try and get a proper look at this. Um, as you can see there's some heads here. So these are for um, the, probably going to butcher the French, but these are for the Grenadiers and the Voltiguers. Voltiguers, Voltiguers, I don't know. It's all French. Um, but yes, so we've got the Grenadier heads there and the, let's just call them light infantry. The light infantry heads here. We've got some bodies there, quite like that chappy there in the great coat. You need to find more models with great coats, I find. You don't really tend to find many of them outside of World War II gaming. Um, I quite like the idea of a bunch of you know chaps going through the cold weather in in big great coats, you know, beating the stuffing out of each other. To me, that sounds like a fine aesthetic. Um, but yes, we've got a mix of uh, we've got drum there. We've got a couple of halberds for sergeants. Um, I'm assuming that is a standard. Um, so you can see here for your commanding officer, you have two different choices of torso to use. Um, one far more decorated than the other. So perhaps that is an early um, or late distinction. Um, obviously this kit covers the Napoleonic army between 1807 and 1814 and there were quite a few different distinctions. Um, the rifle there with the the flag attached to the bayonet that's that's a nice touch. Um, but yes so that's the command sprue. Um, then we have let me see one two three four five we have five of these sprues here. Um, which I'm going to assume are perhaps the light infantry sprues. They have quite big, bulky backpacks there. Um, oh yes, look, more uh, light infantry heads there. But then some grenadier ones, so maybe it's just these are more dynamically um, arranged. And you've got the muskets there. So these would be smoothbore. Um, I believe these would be... These be flintlock muskets, I believe that they would because um yeah, so in the previous video with the English Civil War infantry, they had matchlock muskets, whereas then for a hundred years or so the technology largely stayed the same with the development of the musket. Obviously there were various innovations to make them more reliable and so on. But um but yeah, so these here I believe are flintlock muskets, 
and as you can see here they almost all well they all do in fact have bayonets attached uh, and that was one of the real revolutions of conflict uh, in the uh, late 1600s and the 1700s was the replacement of pikes with bayonets it meant that the individual rifleman could defend himself just as well against cavalry without needing a bunch of large chaps with pikes to defend him but uh, that also meant that Every man that you don't arm with a pike is armed with another musket, so your firepower increases as well. And then we have three sprues of the following. Um, wait, no, hang on a second. I tell a lie. There's six sprues of that variety and two sprues of this variety. Now, these chaps here look like they're more um, advancing in formation, so I suppose this is the, um, the box that... Or this is the kit that you'd probably find more of in the other box, um, with more people advancing in formation without too many um, dynamic poses, because obviously dynamic poses in a mass rank formation are a pain to line up, and also uh, wouldn't necessarily be accurate to the times. So here we go, some more big bulky backpacks, and these chaps have swords on theirs. That's fantastic. I quite like the look of those. Look like they could do some real damage. Um, as you can see here, a few more light infantry heads and a, another grenadier head there. Um, let's try and get a, a close-up without it losing too much focus. Yes, there we go. So that is the French uniform, which you can paint in a myriad of ways. Um, and here you have rifles shouldered, um, as you can see there. Whereas I believe on the other sprue, the rifles were largely held in more dynamic poses. They're either holding them ready to fire or they were, you know, holding them in a different position that wasn't um, at the shoulder. Um, and this is the other difference between the um, second kit and this one. Uh, this one here is included with round bases because the idea is that you're going to be using these for a game of sharp practice, probably set in the Peninsular War or something like that. Um, you wouldn't need them in big ranks and formations. So if you want to play out your fantasy of watching Sharp but on the tabletop, this is probably the kit that you'll be wanting to go for for your dastardly French opponents. Um, and what we can see here as well, this is the, the last bit, it's a far more hefty um, leaflet than the other one. Oh, I believe it actually folds out. Um, but yeah, so it's tips for assembly, uh, basing suggestions, which is quite pleasant. Um, and a whole bunch of different flags, um, as you can see, several of them are very similar, but this includes not just the French regiments, but Swiss regiments, um, Neapolitan regiments, Italian regiments, and uh, let's expand this out, oh, this looks quite lovely, doesn't it? So we've got uniform suggestions and, oh, and rank suggestions for fusiliers. Um, for the, the very brief white coat regulations of 1806 to 1807. Oh dear, let's see if I can get this in shot. We might have to do this sideways so I don't bungle it up against the tripod. Um, for the 1807 to 1814 heads of column. And for the, let's see if I can get this here. For the elite companies, so the Voltigeurs, the light infantry, and the Grenadiers. And then on the back, there's even more stuff going on. So obviously, here is that first page that we saw. But then these are the troops of the Kingdom of Italy, which was a protectorate, I believe, of um, Napoleon's France. Uh, then we have the uniforms of the different Swiss regiments. Um, the Swiss, instead of hiring themselves out as mercenaries, uh, in this case, I believe that Switzerland actually briefly came under uh, Napoleonic control. Um, but the Swiss had a reputation of being hard fighters. And then the Garde de Paris, 1807 to 1808. Like I say, I've probably bungled the pronunciations of all of these, but it uh, doesn't matter. They're French. You can see here so there's a fusilier of the 2nd Regiment, which is interesting. He looks a bit like a British redcoat, doesn't he? Except he's actually French. Um... And then a chasseur. I'm, I'm not even going to bother pronouncing that one. Um, I don't want to embarrass myself this early into the channel. I'm sorry, I've got too much to live for. But yes, so that is 
the wonderfully comprehensive little booklet that comes with the kit. Um, and that is the box. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that. That's my final unboxing video of my newest purchases. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video and you'd like to, you know, like and subscribe to further content. I'm not sure what I'll be doing next. Probably something painting related. Um, I'm still setting bits up in my new house here um, to hopefully get some games in in the future. So until that point, um, we'll probably just be doing unboxings and painting videos just so uh, I have a nice painted collection to play games that you can watch. So until that time, uh, God bless. Have a wonderful day. Cheers.